Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Hi, and welcome to another video in our series on IGCSE Economics. This is Unit 6, Part 3. In today's lesson we will be learning about output and growth. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. How do we measure economic activity? Resources are used to produce goods and services. But how can we measure how the total output of goods and services grows or changes over time? Well, national output equals national income which equals national expenditure. We can therefore measure total output in three ways because the value of output is also equal to the total amount spent on purchasing it which in turn is used to pay for the resources used to produce it, for example, factor incomes including wages and any profits. The total value of output produced in an economy is its gross domestic product or GDP. GDP is calculated by adding together consumer spending plus investments plus government spending plus imports minus exports. As prices rise the total value of output or nominal GDP will also rise, but there may be no actual increase in the volume of goods and services produced. If the volume of goods and services expands, then the real GDP will have increased. Say, if in year 1 the GDP was equal to $100 billion. Then, in year 2, GDP was equal $110 billion. But if inflation was 10%, there has been no change in real GDP. Now, using the same figures again, if in year 1 the GDP was equal to $100 billion. Then, in year 2, GDP was equal $110 billion. But if inflation was 3%, there has been a 7% change in real GDP. GDP is usually measured by the rate of increase in real GDP each period, for example, the change in nominal GDP adjusted for price inflation over the same period. This will show you if the economy is growing quickly, or if it is growing slowly, or perhaps it is actually shrinking. How can we achieve long-term growth? Long-term growth in an economy is achieved by expanding its productive potential by the discovery of more natural resources, investment in new capital goods and infrastructure, technical progress, including the discovery of new man-made materials and more efficient equipment, processes and products. Increasing the amount and quality of labor through more and better health care, education and training. A more efficient allocation of resources. Remember our old friend the production possibility curve? Well here we can see how an increase in any of the above, would increase the PPC. I will give you a hint, you can use this curve while answering questions in your exam. All countries experience cyclical fluctuations in their rate of economic growth over time. Growth is seldom constant over time, bouncing around quite a lot in these two examples from different countries. You will also notice that the growth is not necessarily at the same time in the different countries. The economy goes through a cyclical change over time. Looking at the graph we can see an economic boom, this is where demand for goods and services rises faster than output can rise. Profits peak and prices rise as economy overheats. Economic recession, this is when real GDP falls. Demand for goods and services falls. Firms cut their production and lay off workers. Profits and other incomes fall. Economic recovery, this is when real GDP grows faster than normal. Demand for goods and services rises rapidly. Firms increase output and hire more workers. Profits and other incomes rise. If real GDP falls, will the recession be short-lived, long-lived or a double-dip recession? A recession is when there has been two consecutive quarters of negative economic growth. The recession may be U-shaped, and there will be a recession for a reasonably long period of time. The recession may be V-shaped, this is where the recession is over quickly. It could be a double-dip, or W-shaped recession. This is where the economy recovers quickly, only to fall back into recession once again, followed by another recovery. 
You may have heard these terms recently on the news talking about the recession caused by the pandemic. Should we concentrate on economic growth or economic welfare? The benefits of economic growth are more goods and services, more wants satisfied, increased employment opportunities and incomes, increased sales, profits and business opportunities, low price inflation if output growth keeps pace with demand, increasing tax revenues for a government to improve public services and public infrastructure, improved living standards. Possible problems with growth are Technical progress may replace labor with machines. Scarce resources are used up at a faster rate. Increasing pollution and damage to natural environment. People are not necessarily better off if growth is achieved, for example by producing more weapons, cigarettes, coal-fired power stations or even more cars, televisions and computer games. How do we measure economic welfare? Simply measuring and monitoring the rate at which real output grows over time reveals very little about how standards of living are changing, if growth is sustainable, and whether economic welfare is improving. Here are two possible measures of living standards. Real GDP per capita. This is a measure of the average income per person. If real GDP grows but the population increases at a faster rate then average income per head will fall. But it takes no account of how income is distributed, a few very rich people can skew the average upwards. What people can buy, the availability of goods and services may be poor. The quality of an access to education, health care, clean water and sanitation. The impact of growth on the natural environment. Human Development Index HDI. This is a wider measure that includes real GDP per capita, adjusted for differences in exchange rates between countries. Level of education, how many years on average a person age 25 will have spent in education and how many years a young child entering school now can be expected to spend in education during his or her life. Access to health care and having a healthy lifestyle, measured by life expectancy. The HDI data is regularly published by the United Nations Development Program. The differences across the world are very large, ranging from the highest values in North America, Europe, Japan, and Oceania to the lowest in Central Africa. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.